Good evening. The Lloydminster Region Health Foundation gave away thousands of dollars worth of scholarships to 28 local students st studying in the industry. Melissa Mounier is receiving the Pat Redden Memorial Scholarship, created in honour of a lifelong Lloydminster resident and nurse. Just reading up about her, I personally didn't know her, but uh, the community know her and the nurses around that I've talked to said she was a wonderful person, so it's a great honour for me to uh, take this scholarship in her name. Mounier will one day follow in the footsteps of Redden with the $5,000 she received today going towards her goal of becoming a nurse practitioner in her hometown. I want to do that because when you specialize, usually you're into bigger cities, and I don't want to. I want to be Lloyd size or Lloyd. So um, I find with the shortage of doctors that I would love to come back and fill that gap as a nurse practitioner. But that is just one of the many scholarships given away every year by the foundation. Our mandate is to improve health care in our community. So if we can improve health care by improving and helping uh, health care professionals who can come back and be really at the top of their game, what better way to improve health care? Many of the students receiving the funds study out of town, but it's the impact down the road that's important. Students uh, from the Lloydminster area that are going away and um, furthering their studies and their skills and doing some really remarkable things uh, makes a big difference for all of us as to the type of programs that can be offered here. Um, in Lloydminster, we're ad adding things like orthopedics uh, specialties and pediatrician specialties and all those kinds of things. And so to have the nursing staff that can support that is critical. Those like Amelia Edwards, a third year at Grant McEwen in Edmonton, awarded $2,000. I love working the geriatric population, so never know I could end up working geriatrics and doing a lot of home care, so we'll see what happens. So it will be nice to come back to Lloyd and maybe do that. This year, the LRHF will invest over $33,000 into educating local students and health care professionals. Slavery is higher than ever before in the world, and one local girl is taking steps to end it. She joined up with the organization You Can Free Us to fundraise in a unique way. Elise Cox has more. I went to an orphanage two years ago and I actually didn't have the money to go so what I did is I sold all my clothes for $10 or less and then people started giving me clothes so I just made it um, an event. And after hearing about the organization You Can Free Us, she decided to try and raise $10,000 for their cause through her clothing sales. You Can Free Us is a movement uh, that goes and frees young women and women from forced exploitation in the sex trade. Um, and right now our focus is in India, but we do a lot of awareness projects all across the United States and different parts of Europe. And the topic is an issue that hits close to home for local You Can Free Us supporters. It's interesting because on two levels, one, Lloydminster, you see, you see the challenge of adult entertainment and um, the controversy and you see how it kind of affects worldwide and so it's just a passion of mine that, that I connected with Sujo on. There are more people right now in slavery than history of humanity put together um, and, and that's something that I wake up and realize that, uh, that, that should, somebody should put an end to that. And Megan will continue to support the cause, planning another event for the spring. Elise Cox, New Cap News. Now, the goal was to raise $10,000, and although a final count hasn't been determined, organizers are estimating that they exceeded their goal. Harvest is almost complete around the region, and the community of Marwain is celebrating with their third annual Harvest Day celebration. The event is underway for the community to come together for a day of fun and education. Once again, here's Elise Cox. Harvest Day is a joint effort between the Marwain Ag Society and Marwain Fire and Rescue. Their purpose? To educate the community on what they both do. To be able to sort of uh, educate the people in the community uh, about farm life and, uh, and what, where, where the food's grown, 
in today's world there's a lot less uh, farmers and uh, myself I do farm just right close to here so it's nice to be able to um, share what we do with uh, some other people that don't have a chance to see what farming is all about. A big part of our job is public perception making sure the right message gets out on what we do and how often we do it and, and how their support helps us in achieving our goals. But these aren't the only goals Harvest Day is looking to achieve. The event is a major fundraiser for projects in the community and this year their focus is on the arena. We've raised over three million dollars uh, in various methods so we're well on our way but we, we got about a uh, five to six hundred thousand uh, dollars left to, uh, to raise or, or through grants and uh, fundraising so got a ways to go yet. So it's no surprise that Harvest Day is a popular community event. Because it brings everybody together and, and makes them aware of what the fire and rescue does and that it's, it is community oriented. Something new, something gets the community involved. Elise Cox, New Cap News. And speaking of harvest, the Root Community Emporium is holding a Harvest Moon Lantern Walk. It kicks off in less than an hour at Bud Miller Park. From there, the group will head towards the Root, discovering all sorts of amazing performers and artists along the way. Set up at the Root has been underway all day. Once the walk is over, there will be live music, delicious food, more artisans and face painting. Shane Phillips is one of the headliners for the festival. I'm playing the uh, set, the closing set, so I'm going to probably play for an hour and a half um, at the end of the, after the walk and after the first band. I'm going to do some tribal didgeridoo craziness, dance, dance frenzy type stuff. You know, I think it's really important to every community to have, to keep the, to keep the, the local businesses um, going, to keep the, the local, uh, like the social groups and things like that. I think it's fantastic, you know, essential really. Again, the walk kicks off at 7 p.m. at Bud Miller Park. We will have more on tonight's event tomorrow on New Cap News. It hasn't been the greatest hockey so far, Lloyd Munster. The Bobcats looking to change that around in a two-game series against the Fort McMurray Oil Barons starting last night. They were looking for their first victory after a winless September. Kyle Baumgartner getting the nod in the first, flashes the leather on Former cat Brock Mashmeyer, then shorthanded Nolan Remchuk with the pretty hands, but dings it off the post. Barons draw first blood. Mike Moranchuk drops it for Zach Wittenberg. He goes blocker side. Mob lead 1-0 after 20. In the second, Matty Marcino looking for the equalizer, but gets tripped up. Cats go on the power play, but can't score. Same frame, Austin McDonald is able to. He gets the rebound for his fourth in five games. 23 seconds later on the power play, Grant Baker buries one from the blue line. It's a 2-1 lead heading into the third. Early third, Tanner Jailett gives up a huge rebound that goes right to Grant Baker. He scores on the complete screen. The two-goal lead doesn't last long, though. 15 seconds later, Luke Lalore buries one for the Barons. They're one back. Midway through the frame, Nolan Uramcha somehow scores a softy. He doesn't care how it goes in. Cats win their first game 4-2. That feels pretty good. That feels pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the boys really committed and played hard today, and uh, and that's what that's what the reward is, you know. We, and I mean, we've been we've been in that boat before where we've had those opportunities, and uh, you know, we closed the deal today. So I'm uh, just ecstatic for our guys and our room for sure. Yeah. It feels great to get the first round of the way. I mean, we finally put a full game together and worked it out as a team. I mean, we were losing some pretty close games and it was really cutting us down, but I think the guys came together and we were working hard in practice and we knew that eventually we'd get, we'd get one. So with the win, the Bobcats move within three points of second last in the division. That spot's held by the Fort McMurray Oil Barons with six points. Cats went one for three on the power play and shut down all five Oil Baron opportunities with the extra man. Tonight, the teams are back in action at the Civic Center as the Cats look to continue an undefeated October. Puck drop is at 7.30. We'll have all the highlights and post-game reaction tomorrow night on New Cap Sports. And more news coming from the Lloyd Minster Bobcats. Second year forward Travis Wellman has been traded to the Calgary Canucks for future considerations. Wellman scored four points in seven games this year before being removed from the lineup the last three games. The 18-year-old is originally from Calgary. He scored 28 points in 57 games for the Bobcats in his rookie season. The Bonneville Pontiacs were also in action last night, trying to create some room for themselves atop the North Division standings. 
The Ponce jumped out to an early lead, scoring twice in the first five minutes, but the teams entered the third all tied at two. Max Collins scored his third of the year and second game winner of the season at 12.56 of the third to give the Ponce their eighth win in 11 games. And the Alberta minor midget hockey season has begun for the Lloyd Minster Rohan Rage. The team finished tops in the North Division last year and we're hoping to carry over some of that success this afternoon in their home opener against the SSAC Bulldogs. First period, the Rage on the power play. Zach Fisher waits and risks one from the blue line to fool the Bulldogs netminder. They're up 1-0 six minutes in. Minutes later, Fisher squeaks it past the Dogs D to create a two-on-one. Perfect pass, but Chaston Braid can't finish the play. Bulldogs not the score on a late power play. Devin Brooks finds the man in front for an easy top shelf snipe. Second period, Rage players find room by the blue paint. They crash hard but can't squeak it past the pads of the Bulldogs. They do take the lead five minutes into the second though. Fisher can't knock home Braid's one-timer but Jesse Reeds is there to clean up the garbage. Minute and a half later, Sean Weber wins the boards battle. Tarek's Fisher Cobes takes advantage of the gift. It's 3-1. And they just keep on coming. 23 seconds later, Chandler Klein puts one on net. Juicy rebound. Klein can't get it, but Ben Lafferman follows it in. All of a sudden, they're up three. Bulldogs would cut it to 5-3, but the Rage wouldn't let up. They win their regular season opener 7-3 at home. The two teams are back at it again tomorrow at 1:15 at the Civic Center. And the Lloyd Minster Universal Heat are also on the road today against the Sherwood Park Flyers. The Flyers were shut out in their first game against SSAC, but have scored 26 goals in their last three games. Sam Steele leads that team with 14 points. The same total that the Heat's Mason Shaw has in four games. They sit tied for third in league points. The Heat's Kale Clegg is second in defenseman scoring with nine points. And the Baker Hughes Bobcats are also on the road. The Cats are matched up against a team with an identical record early on, the United Cycle Maple Leafs. The Bobcats lost their last game 3-1 to Sherwood Park, while the Leafs are coming off a win against Fort Saskatchewan. And the Lloyd Minster PWM Steelers are currently up against the Southeast Tigers. The visitors are tots in the South Division with seven points, while the Steelers are in fifth in the North. Aaron Baddock leads the team with seven points in six games. Good for third in the league.